Okay, so now we have a way of representing unsigned numbers, but of course we need a way of representing signed numbers. So we need to be able to store negative numbers as well as uh, positive numbers. So there are actually quite a few different ways of doing this. We're going to study uh, three of them now and then we'll see one more uh, later on. So uh, we'll first talk about sign magnitude, which is kind of the most natural or intuitive uh, and the easiest to understand, but uh, it's the hardest to actually implement. Uh, and so it's, it's rare to find a computer that actually uses sign magnitude, unfortunately. Um, there's also one's complement, which is kind of an intermediate format. You get slightly cleaner arithmetic, but it's, it's less intuitive. Uh, and then we'll study two's complement, which is what most machines use uh, because it gives you the cleanest arithmetic, but unfortunately uh, it is the most complicated to understand. So let's talk about the first two. So uh, sign magnitude is a way of representing signed integers where you interpret the most significant bit as a sign bit. So when you're writing the binary out in our, our normal, the sort of the normal way with the, the most significant bit first, then it's going to be the leftmost bit. And so if that bit is not set, so if it's zero, then you have an ordinary unsigned number. If the number is one, then under sign magnitude, then it's going to be, it, it is a negative number. And so uh, in order to determine what the value of that negative number is, you just interpret the remaining bits as an unsigned number X. So for instance, um, so, so if you have a negative number, right, then the absolute value is going to be the remaining bits in the number. This is quite nice because it means that in order to negate a number under sign magnitude, all we have to do is flip the sign bit. So all we have to do is change that first bit. So if it's positive uh, or if it's zero, it means that it's a positive number, so we can make it negative just by flipping it. Uh, and if it's negative, it means we can make it positive just by changing it uh, to zero. So uh, there are some disadvantages though. There are two zeros. So if you think about it, both uh, uh, negative zero and positive zero are possible here. So in, for instance, you have uh, four bits for your integer, then you can uh, leave all the other bits zero and either set the first bit, in which case you'd have negative zero, or s leave the first bit unset, which would lead to positive zero. Uh, and this is also far less useful for arithmetic because the sign bit really has no relationship with the magnitude. Uh, and so you can't use any of our, we can't reuse any unsigned ar arithmetic logic. So uh, here are some examples. So here is uh, a number. So this is an unsigned zero uh, or an unsigned number. Uh, or this, this is a, uh, sorry, this is a positive number uh, when represented as uh, a signed magnitude number. So three uh, is positive. So we'd have a, a zero here and then we can encode the rest of the number over here. Um, this is a negative number, so this is negative three because we have the same number in the rest of the representation and the sign bit is set to one. So this is three, this is negative three, again with four bits. And you'll notice that um, you know, if for instance we wanted to represent the value, um, so uh, zero, one, uh, one, one would normally be the value 11 right? So what this means is that we can't actually represent the value positive 11 using only four bits in sign magnitude. Um, and uh, just to sort of illustrate here, uh, if you were trying to do arithmetic here, seven minus three, uh, what you want to end up with here is four. So we want to add seven and negative three and get four. And, and there's not really any way of doing that uh, in, in a way that makes sense. So th this scheme is, is not really used uh, all that often. But let's take a second to think about it. So uh, what is the negation of this number in sine magnitude? So pause the video and see if you can identify which of these is correct. Okay, well, so in sine magnitude, in order to negate a number, we just flip the first bit. So we would take this bit here, this is the sine bit, and we would change it from a one to a zero. So we just look through the answer choices and the one that matches that is F. Okay, so another question. So which of the following are negative numbers if interpreted as a sign magnitude integer? So if I were to give you all these bits and as context tell you that they are all sign magnitude numbers, which of them are negative? So take a second and pause the video and see if you can identify which of these are negative. 
All right, and if you thought about it for uh, more than a few seconds, then uh, you're doing too much work. So inside magnitude, uh, you can tell whether a number is negative simply by looking at the most significant bit. So all these numbers where the first bit is set, those are going to be the ones that are negative. Okay, so uh, let's briefly discuss one's complement. We're not going to use one's complement much uh, in this course, uh, but it's sort of interesting um, from a theoretical point of view. So uh, in one's complement, we are going to interpret the most significant bit as a sign bit again, so the same rule. Uh, and then we're going to interpret all of the bits as an unsigned integer x. And if the number is negative, then the absolute value is going to be uh, the value that you would get if you took uh, all ones and subtracted uh, the value x from it. One nice thing about this is that uh, it works out that if you want to negate all of, uh, to negate a number, um, you can just flip all the bits. So don't just flip the carry bit, flip all the bits and that will negate the number. Uh, there are still some disadvantages. So we still have two different representations of zero. Uh, it's also less useful for arithmetic. It's a little bit better because you can still do unsigned arithmetic. Um, and uh, in order to sort of fix up the answer, you have to do something called an end around carry. Uh, and that's not super important uh, for us, but uh, I will link a YouTube video that talks about this. Um, but so in any case, uh, again, the, the negation is flipping all the bits. Uh, you still interpret the first bit as a sign bit and the arithmetic is a little bit better, but still not quite good enough. So let's answer uh, the same questions. So uh, what is the negation of this number in one's complement? So take a second and see if you can identify the correct answer here. So we said that in order to negate a number in one's complement, we simply flip all the bits. Uh, and so we would flip uh, this number and we'd get 0, 1, 0, 0, 1, uh, which I believe is uh, answer choice number C here. All right, so then uh, again, uh, this question, so which of the following are negative numbers uh, if they are interpreted as a ones complement integer? These are the same numbers that I gave you the last time I asked you this question, uh, except now I'm telling you all these bits uh, are here and the context is that they are ones complement integers. So now which ones are negative numbers? So pause the video and see if you can identify the negative ones. Again, this is where a lot of the students sort of lose the forest for the trees. The way you check whether a number is negative is the same between sign magnitude representation and one's complement. That first bit is still a sign bit. It still indicates whether or not a number uh, in that format is negative. So just like before, the only two numbers here that are negative are these first two. And we can tell that just by looking at the sign bit without having to do any further computation on the number itself. We would only need to do that computation if we wanted to try to recover the absolute value of that negative number.